Hello friends, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. So the original plan for today was that I would film an actual good video that I've been planning for some time now, but um, there was a heat wave. I don't have air conditioning. My brain doesn't function anymore. So today we're just gonna fuck around. Today we're gonna do <laughs> bookish buzzfeed quizzes because i found this one with controversial bookish statements and then you could find out if your opinion was controversial or if it was similar to the general audience and since i feel like i always say on this channel that i'm always scared that i have very controversial book opinions today we can put that to the test and see if i'm actually controversial or not oh my god i'm already sweating i feel like this background is really boring Wait a second. Like this? Yes. Beautiful. Okay, so this is definitely not my original idea. I recently saw a video by Jesse from Jesse the Reader do this whole video where he did bookish quizzes. And there was this one from the controversial statements that I was like, that's cool. I want to do that. I want to but I will link this video in the description. I wonder how long it will take until my brain just shuts down. Halfway through this video, I've just like molted away. Melted away? Molted? See, there it goes. Do you actually agree with these controversial book opinions? Let's find out. The first statement is, there is no point in buying multiple copies of your favorite book. <coughs> I have nothing against you know, people who do do this, obviously you can do with your money what you want. But personally, I don't see the point because I could spend that money that I would spend on a new editions of my favorite book on another book that I haven't read yet. So it's just more efficient money wise. Let me just, okay, <laughs> I can demonstrate this. Okay, so these are the Dutch translations of Catch uh, no, Mockingjay and Catching Fire. They're so ugly. So I've been debating buying just like a box of the English sets because I love the Hunger Games, but I just can't get myself to buy an extra copy of Catching Fire and Mockingjay, even though these editions are super ugly because I'm just, it feels like a waste of money to me. But that's just how I am. Obviously I have nothing against other people buying multiple copies, but that's how I look at it. But for now, let's just look at whether other people would agree with me or not. Oh, most people actually agree. Okay, that's interesting because I feel like here on booktube, most people would disagree and say that it's actually totally fine to buy multiple copies of a book. But apparently general BuzzFeed audience agrees. Harry Potter is overrated. Okay, so you guys need to know that I haven't read Harry Potter, but I do really like the movies and I've read the first book. One part of me is tempted to say, I agree because of what recently went down with JK Rowling. I'm kind of like, you know, maybe we should move on to other books that are also really great that we can give to children and not everything has to be about Harry Potter maybe. But also I understand that if it's something that you like grew up with, it's just great. Like even, I didn't even read the books, but I grew up with the movies and it even has a special place in my heart. So, okay, I'm just gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be neutral on this one. Yeah, obviously most people disagree on that one. I expected that. Paperback over hardback. I am firmly a fan of the paperbackies. Paperbackies. Okay, so hardcovers, they are prettier. Yes, like they have beautiful, you know, if you take off the dust jacket, they're like pretty and they look nice. Paperbacks are better fans, so. It's always just heavier and it's bulkier, so it's harder to take with you on the go. And I usually read like on the go, whereas paperbacks are always just easy, easy in your hand. You can just throw them and they won't break and everything's fine. I personally also think they look cuter on the shelf. At least the ones that I have tend to be more like uniform. So I'm a big paperback fan. Let's see what BuzzFeed thinks. Ooh, it's very even. Also, a lot of people just don't care. Okay, okay. I feel like every person that I've met that likes books has a specific opinion on whether they prefer paperbacks or hardbacks, but I've rarely ever seen anyone be neutral on this, but apparently there are a lot of people that are pretty neutral on this, so I'm learning something every day. The next question is, the Percy Jackson movies are actually good. Okay, so hear me out on this one. 
I haven't read the Percy Jackson books, so when I saw the movie for the first time, The Lightning Thief, I actually really enjoyed it. The soundtrack introduced me to Fall Out Boy. 15 year old me was very happy with that. I know the movie's not necessarily very good, but I think the reason that I liked it is because I was like, ooh, this whole world of Percy Jackson. I kind of really like it and I didn't read the book, so I didn't notice how different it was from the book. But if I were to read the book, I would probably see how bad they are in comparison. But if I'm gonna be super honest, when I first watched it, I was like, oh, I actually really like this. And everyone's gonna disagree with me. Oh, most people are actually neutral. Okay, I'm assuming that's like all the people who haven't read Percy Jackson. Classics aren't actually good. Okay, so... <clears throat> Sit down. Classics are not a uniform genre. You can't talk about classics as a whole because there are so many different classics. You have classic dystopians, you have literary classics, you have classics from the romantic era, you have classics from like the ancient times, you have classics that are like last century. You can't put classics into one uniform thing and say they're good or they're bad. Now yes, I've definitely read classics that I personally didn't really like and I've read classics that I thought were really good. Just like any other type of book there's gonna be some that you like and there's gonna be some that you don't like. There are people that pretend that classics are just always good and if you don't like classics then you just don't get them. I don't like that, but I also don't like people that are like Ooh, I hate classics. Classics aren't actually good. That stuff. I also don't agree with that. I think we can all see that you can like a certain classic and you can dislike a certain classic and that's fine. Wow. The reason classics tend to be really good is I think because they were just popular back then and they remained popular or they really meant something for the era that they were published. There's usually good reasons for them to become classics, but just like popular books in general, just because something is popular maybe makes it, you know, maybe there's a higher chance that you're gonna like it, but there's still a big chance that you're not gonna like it. So with the statement classics aren't actually good, I'm gonna say I disagree because it just depends on the classic and your own opinion. Yeah. Okay, so most people disagree with me. So far, I think I'm doing pretty okay with how controversial I am. The next one is listening to an audiobook counts as reading. <clears throat> Sit down again. <laughs> I genuinely thought of making like a whole video on this, but I recently like looked up into this. Here's the thing. First off, technically speaking, if you're listening to an audiobook, you're not reading. You're not doing the act of reading. Yes, okay. That's just like a definition thing. I saw a video somewhere that your reading comprehension is the same. If you read a book or if you listen to a book, you're still gonna take in the story the same way. It's just one is passive and the other is active. The only difference, and this is something I've noticed, is that if you're listening, there's just a higher chance that you're gonna drift off with your thoughts and that you're gonna miss certain things. When I'm reading a book physically, if I miss something, I quickly, I can just easily go back and read it again. But when I'm listening, I tend not to do that. And most people actually do it that way that when they're listening because it's passive, it's just easier to miss things and you don't really go into it as much. But that's your own fault <laughs> because you can technically go back and listen to it again. In my opinion, it's completely on you if you don't take up the story as much if you're listening to an audiobook. I know that I don't take up a story as much if I'm listening to an audiobook because I always do it while I'm doing the dishes or like doing my laundry. If I were to just sit down and listen to an audiobook the same way that I would sit down with a book, then I would probably have the same experience with the story, but I don't do that because I choose to listen to my audiobooks while doing other things. So it's completely on me, but for a lot of people, listening to the audiobook actually makes it easier to take in the story than when they're reading a physical book. Also an argument that I really like is that, you know, back in the day when we were all cavemen, we were telling stories to each other before scripts was even invented. Originally stories were told to each other, originally people listened to stories. So if anyone ever tells you that you listening to an audiobook is some kind of weird non-reading way of reading a book, just tell them that you're doing it the traditional way. So yes, I agree that audiobooks count as reading. Oh my gosh, most people disagree. <clears throat> I'm assuming that all those people who disagree 
are just gonna be like, well, it's not technically reading because you're listening. Anyway, if you ever need me to defend you on why audiobooks count as reading, you can contact me and I will fight someone. The next one is ebooks are better than normal books. Okay, so here I can be quick. I don't read ebooks simply because I don't have a, like an e-reader and I don't like reading them on my screen. So I'm neutral on this. I'm excited to see what most people think. Most people disagree, yeah. Just so good. Then we have characters are more important than plot. Okay, so this one is gonna be super divisive, I already know that. Personally, I like characters more than plot because I've noticed that there are sometimes books where there's barely any plot, like in Six of Crows, but because I love the characters, I can still enjoy the book. But if I read a book with really cool plot, but I don't care about the characters, like in um, The Library of the Unwritten, I end up not enjoying the book. Because, here's the thing, I find plot interesting, because it happens to these characters that I love. So for me, it's gonna be characters. Okay, oh, most people are neutral on this? Pfft, weak. And then it's actually quite even split. Okay, okay, let me know in the comments if you're more a character or a plot person, because I feel like on booktube, most people are character people, but I might be wrong with that one. Oh, that was it. Oh, I don't get like a, okay, let's see how I did. <laughs> I'm gonna count how many times my opinion was not the most common one. Alright, so the final verdict is that out of eight statements, four of them I was controversial or didn't agree with the masses. So I guess that makes me a very moderately controversial person? Basically very boring conclusions. That I think that's what this means. So... That was me doing a weird BuzzFeed quiz <laughs> and going into it way too deep. I really hoped you enjoyed this very useless video. Please give me a very useless comment and click that useless subscribe button or like button. And then follow me on my social media where I also post pretty useless stuff. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another time when it's hopefully not a heat wave anymore because I can't stand it. I am sitting in the attic, which is the only place that I can film and it's just where all the heat is like combining and I think I'm just, <laughs> my brain is spiraling. Bye. <laughs>